I don't know about you guys, but a lot of times I like working with samples more than real drums. And it's not because I don't know how to mix real drums or I'm trying to avoid doing the work of editing them or anything. Actually, it might be a little bit of that, but it's really about the consistency. If I figured out a really good drum shell combination, I like to have it as a starting point but digitally in the palm of my hands. When you're using real drums, your starting point is in the palm of someone else's hands, literally. And the reality is unless you have an excellent drummer, the drums are going to just sound better when you're using samples. This is my reality. And after working with samples in real drums, I get that you can always make it work with real drums by layering samples and whatnot, but why do all of that work and waste all of that time if the results could have been better from the get-go using nothing but samples in the first place? But there are some issues with using samples because you never want it to sound like you're using a sample, you know what I mean? You want it to feel organic. Well, by the end of this video, you'll know how to bring your drum samples to life. One of these tips is something I've never seen explained before, but I'm gonna share it with you guys cause I love you all. So what's happening fam? Miami here with JST and today we'll be going over everything from drum shells to ride bells. But I have another bell you can ride. Why does that sound so dirty? Hit the notification bell, tap that subscribe button and give me a like because my transition game is still crazy. There are a bunch of things that stop drum samples from sounding realistic and instead of wasting any more time, let's just get right into it. Number one. This one should be obvious, but picking a solid drum sample library. You know, there are some great ones out there and some that aren't so great. We have some tried and true ones like Superior Drummer, a Drum Forge, Steven Slade Drums, etc. But there are some that aren't as great. And you want something that sounds like this when you're playing it back. Here are some things you want to look out for when you're picking a drum library. Quality over quantity, at least a few amazing snare and kick options, round robin of hits per sample, multi-velocities, that's really important when you're doing your snare rolls, you know. And sometimes a signature artist that you trust wouldn't put their name on something that sucks. Look, you don't want to waste money on something because of the hype, so make sure you read into it, listen to examples, you know, ask your friends about their experiences. Next thing on the list humanizing the MIDI. There's a thing we call a 127 job. That's what happens when you leave a drum MIDI at full velocity the entire time, and then don't take the needed time to program the drums in the way that a human would play it. The thing is, drummers aren't robots, you know, except Matt Griner and Eloy Casagrande. When normal people hit a snare, it's not at the same exact velocity every time, so it shouldn't be that way when you're programming your drums either. Listen to the difference between this beat that was programmed tastefully versus the one that was a 127 job. Do you see how wildly different that is? But some of you guys knew that and do it, and others of you knew it and still don't take the time. Well, this is a necessity to making your track sound way more natural because it's almost impossible to make drum samples sound real without doing that. But now I'm gonna show you the thing I was talking about earlier that I've never seen somebody do in a video before. Number three, gating your samples like a real drum kit. So when someone records a real drum set, there's always a ton of gating happening on the shells, right? And there's a feeling from that gating that happens that one just doesn't get in fake drums because there's no need to do it. I found this technique out accidentally one day because I was sent drums and they were programmed really well. I mean like really well. And they were put in a folder called real drums. So my first thought was whoever this drummer is was a god, but then I started to treat it the way I would any normal real drum kit just to find out later that they were fake. The person had sent them with all the bleed from each of the other mics going to each of the sources, which I had never seen somebody do before when they're bouncing something out to send to someone. The results were that it just felt more realistic to me than usual. So the idea is to program the drums, 
Then allow the bleed from the other mics, you know, if the plugin allows it, and gate it like a normal kit. Take a listen to the results. If you found that interesting and want to give it a try, make sure to grab a copy of Tominator today by clicking the link in the description below. It does a great job at performing this trick. And if you really want to take it a step further, you can add another main sample on top of the shells to give it the feeling of real drums with added samples. Just wanted to share this because I thought it was cool and if anyone ends up doing it, please share the results with me. But on to our next topic for making samples sound more realistic. And this might not be applicable for everybody, but... Number four, playing drums on an electronic kit. Now, yeah, there's an entry point to doing this one, right? Because it isn't right in front of you or you're limited if you aren't a drummer. And yeah, this is more in the tracking stage, but if you can convince a drummer to record on a MIDI kit, then you'll be way far ahead when it comes to recording because you don't have to program fake drums and the drummer will already be happy with it because they're the ones that played it. Now, all you literally have to do is just quantize a little bit and you're way ahead in terms of how long it would take to do it otherwise. I strongly suggest investing in an electronic drum kit because the benefits of having one around are amazing. Just having one, I learned how to play drums a little bit better and it actually helped me understand a drummer's mindset if I'm keeping it real. You know, you kind of start picking up why drummers do certain things. I remember when I used to program, I'd have a drummer hitting like three things at the same time and they'd be like, bro, I only have two hands. I feel them now though. And sitting behind a kit like that really has a lot of benefits. So let's go over all of these one more time. Picking a solid drum library, humanizing the MIDI, gating your samples like a real kit and playing the drums on an electronic kit. Not everyone has the budget to record real drums. And even if they do, it doesn't mean the drums are going to come out sounding great. I think the more we come to accept the way audio is moving, the better off we're gonna be. The cost of recording drums is a lot and having the right gear to do so is even more expensive. But if we can just get our program drums sounding a little bit less programmed, I think we'll be on our way to continuing to create great records throughout our era of time. Do you have any other tips when it comes to humanizing drums? Is this gonna help you out in the long run? Leave it in the comments below and I will chat with you fine people like I always do. And if you're an engineer on the come up, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. You only have to do it one time and tap that bell for notifications. So when a video drops, you know the location. Till next time, my friends, I'll catch you later.